Foss, líderes en soluciones al sector productor de camarón en México. Formamos una alianza junto a los principales y más grandes productores en la búsqueda de la eficiencia, rentabilidad y excelencia. Contamos con la más grande capacidad de producción de alimento en la industria, pues estamos comprometidos con el enorme reto de la acuicultura a nivel mundial. Junto a los productores, exportamos al mundo producto de gran calidad y un alto estándar nutricional. To end this second day of conferences, we continue Dr. Sanya Siva, CEO and co-founder of Your Foods. Sanya is a scientist with more than 10 years of experience working with muscle cells, adipocytic and mother cells. After graduating with a PhD in the University of Technological of Singapore, She did his PhD in postdoc, and after four years of work on the post PhD, he worked in the empresarial development and the research process together. Founded two companies, Biotech National and SheCorp. She's been in the cover of Foss Woman and Care for their endeavors. Nowadays, Dr. Tanya and Dr. Kay and Lee and the other co founder of SheMeat are working on the development of meat based on cell stems. Talk about the production of shrimp from cellular cultures. Hi, I'm Sandesh Sriram, the CEO and co founder of Shiok Meats. We are a cell based crustacean meat company um, and we're based in Singapore. Today I'm going to talk about our technology, um, what our company does, and the need for cell based meats, especially cell based seafood, which is what we are working on. To start off with, Um, I think a lot of us know the issues of the conventional meat and seafood industry, everything from animal cruelty to unethical practices in factory farms to unsustainable practices in terms of fishing, as well as the amount of protein that we are producing is just unsustainable for the larger population. Overuse of antibiotics, accumulation of heavy metals and microplastics, lack of traceability. Uh, we've seen scandals where fish were not the fish that they were said to be. Um, uh, there was a huge horse meat scandal in the Netherlands a couple of years ago and uh, so on. Um, there's also the issue of slave laborers, human abuse as well as animal abuse, the use, the extensive or unsustainable use of energy, land and water. And um, all this is leading to environmental issues, climate change, as well as loss of biodiversity. Um, these are some of the you know, key reasons um, uh, that the whole food industry or the, uh, you know, all of the consumers are looking at alternative meat and seafood products. Um, and we have seen the rise of plant-based meat, for example, and currently we are talking about cell-based meats. So just looking at the landscape of cell-based protein alone, there are over 70 companies all around the world. It, it used to be about 25 to 30 companies a couple of years ago, but uh, the industry has accelerated ever since, as you can see. And there are cell-based meat companies doing 3D printed meat. Um, they're using air to produce protein. Um, there's then beef, poultry, foie gras, pork, um, definitely all of the other proteins that are there. But I'm specifically looking at cell-based seafood As you can see here, we are only a handful of companies around the world. And Shiok Meats um, is the first company um, that started working on crustaceans like shrimp, crab, and lobster. Um, and we are currently the only company working with all crustaceans, um, including crayfish, uh, shrimp, prawn, crab, and lobster, um, and so on. Uh, most of the cell-based companies also were located in, um, you know, in the West, in US and Europe. Uh, when we started Shiok Meats in 2018, we were the only Singapore Southeast Asia-based cell-based company, which was in August 2018. Uh, but ever since in the last two and a half years, we have actually seen more companies come up in this part of the world, which is very exciting for us. 
Uh, we are concentrating on the Asia Pacific market, which is APAC, and this is where more than 60% of the population lives. As you know, we have China and India, the largest, two largest populations of the world. And we've seen that um, uh, all of these um, you know, consumers in this part of the world do consume a lot of meat and seafood. Just to take a country like Hong Kong, they consume about 144 kilograms of meat and seafood per year per person. Um, you can just do the math and identify as to how much meat and seafood a small country like Hong Kong consumes. Let's just take Ch uh, Singapore, which is again a very small country. We consume about 85 kilograms of meat and seafood per year. And a country like China, which has 1.2 billion in population, they consume about um, 70 to 80 kilograms of meat and seafood per year. Um, just looking at these numbers, it's very alarming and we're not able to produce enough protein for all of these populations or the food supply chain is disrupted. Um, and the population is growing a lot. Um, so we need to be able to feed everybody. So when we started Shiok Meats, we started looking at which type of protein or which type of um, seafood or which type of meat we wanted to work with. Uh, we decided to uh, work on shrimp because shrimp has an impressive nutrition profile and it's actually consumed a lot in Asia. It is low in calories, uh, providing only about 84 calories in um, about 100 grams, 85 to 100 grams serving. And it actually does not contain much of carbs. Um, approximately 90% of the calories actually in shrimp come from protein. So it, it is an extremely nutritious, healthy and delicious protein. But the shrimp industry has been tainted with a lot of issues from, um, you know, 30% of the shrimp products being misrepresented, use of antibiotics, fungicides and chemicals. Um, and then there's, of course, microplastics and heavy metal accumulation. But you, if you, might, you might think farm shrimp is an issue, but actually when you look at ocean caught shrimp, for every kilogram of wild shrimp that's caught, there's about 20 kilograms of bycatch, which is other sea animals or other plants that are being caught unnecessarily. Uh, we also have the issues of peeling of shrimps by slave laborers. Um, we're definitely overfishing, which is unsustainable. We are uh, cleaning out mangroves and land that can be used for something else um, to actually be used for shrimp farms, which is causing a lot of climate change and issues. Um, also, um, in general, uh, this protein is liked by, by many, many people, not only shrimp, but even crab and lobster. And uh, we, we're just not producing enough for everybody. The world's population is going to be uh, 10 billion in the next 20 to 30 years. And there's a tremendous need for protein out there. Um, so we have seen that the global crustacean market um, is actually projected to grow about 1.4 X every year and uh, create a revenue of just, uh, create a revenue, sorry, create a revenue of 150 billion US dollars um, in the next five years. And we have seen that the production of farm shrimp has actually gone up. So what has worked is that shrimp farming has been established quite well, but crabs and lobsters cannot be very effectively farmed. So you still need to go into the oceans to catch these animals. We are not giving them enough time to breed and grow. Um, so this is leading to lesser and lesser animals and endangered species as well in the ocean. Um, shrimp has been farmed pretty well, but there are a lot of issues, like I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, about um, 20 to 30 percent increase in shrimp farms have been seen in the last 20 years, and Asia Pacific is actually leading the shrimp production. Major markets that import uh, the shrimp are actually the US, Europe, and Japan. Uh, shrimp, actually, compared to all other species that are out there in the fish and seafood, actually has a higher share value because um, it, it has a lower share in quantity when compared to other fish like salmon and trout, trout and all of that, but it indicates a higher unit value. And as you know, crabs and lobsters are pretty expensive, so they are a high value uh, product as well. Uh, we are dealing with processed crustacean meats here, so just zo zooming into processed uh, crustacean market. Uh, the top importers are US, Japan, Korea, and Hong Kong whereas the top exporters are India, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and Spain. 
and China actually imports and exports as well. They do have large amount of shrimp farms, um, but they also import a lot of the species that are grown in other countries. Um, just looking at shrimp alone, we have seen that uh, they have an impressive uh, CAGR of 8% um, and the global shrimp market will surpass the 5 billion uh, mark in terms of uh, revenue in, in the next uh, eight to nine years. Um, zooming into the Asian crustacean market, we have seen that 50% of the crustaceans actually happens only in China, but there have been issues with some diseases that have spread in these shrimps uh, called a white spot disease that is literally uh, wiping out a lot of shrimp farms. So hence a lot of countries like India and Indonesia have taken up shrimp farming and are doing very well in the last couple of years. Um, looking at a very small country like Singapore, where we are only about less than 6 million in population, we ourselves consume about 128,000 tons of seafood um, we consumed last year, uh, and the numbers are going up. So approximately about 21 kilograms of seafood is consumed uh, per person per year. So like I mentioned, we are going to be an explosive uh, population. We are uh, you know, going to be 10 billion in the next 20 to 30 years. So there's going to be a tremendous need for protein and seafood um, in the coming years. And there's going to be a tremendous need for nutritious seafood in the coming years. And so what the cell-based uh, seafood industry uh, provides is nutritious, delicious, healthy, and a sustainable source of seafood without harming the environment. And we are looking forward to working with a sustainable aquaculture industry. We have to collaborate in order to make this happen and make, be able to feed the 10 billion in the next 20 to 30 years. So what we do at Shiok Meats um, is that we are a company that has a mission uh, to bring delicious, healthy and sustainable shrimp and crustacean meat to your table by harvesting it from cells instead of animals. So we are Southeast Asia and Singapore's first ever cell-based meat company. We started in August, 2018. And currently we are the only company working on cell-based shrimp in the global landscape as well. Shiok actually means delicious or fantastic um, in Singapore Malay slang and hence the name for the company. So why our shrimp is uh, you know, better in every way is because we are adding an additional food supply. Like I mentioned, we need a tremendous amount of protein uh, for the growing population. So we need an alternative additional production process that helps to add protein to the existing protein landscape. Uh, we want to make sure that you know, we take care of the environment, we are sustainable. So we actually use lesser energy, water and land uh, for these kind of process using stem cells to grow meats and seafood. We are very much bothered about food safety and consumer health. So we don't add any antibiotics or harmful chemicals. We are also very much bothered about ethics in labor and animal welfare. So there's absolutely no animal cruelty, no slave laborers and any of that. Um, as I mentioned, the company was started in August 2018, so about two and a half years ago. Uh, the company was started by myself here and my co-founder, Kai Ling. We both have over 20 years of combined experience in stem cell and cell biology. And the rest of our team, uh, about 20 of us right now, um, are highly skilled engineers, scientists, and food technologists from prestigious universities all around the world. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce myself a little bit more. Um, so I am I, I'm actually a scientist by education and training, uh, worked on stem cells for about 13 years of my life. Um, so I started out uh, doing my bachelor's in microbiology and master's in biotech um, in, uh, in India. And then I actually moved to Singapore in 2009 to do my PhD in stem cell biology worked as a postdoc for a couple of years um, and did all of my work was on stem cells from different animals, different organs, but mostly for human diseases and treatment of human diseases. Um, around 2014, I started up my first company, which was called Biotech in Asia, a science news website. And then I, 2016, I actually quit being a scientist and took up business development at uh, ASTAR here, which is a public private research organization. And I started uh, learning on the job about commercialization, patents, 
um, you know, IP, intellectual property, uh, budgeting, financing, all of that. How do you take out science out of a laboratory into the industry or into the hands of consumers? Um, at the same time, I founded my second company, uh, which is a science events company that does science workshop for students. So, and then I kind of became a serial entrepreneur. And uh, 2018, I decided to quit my full-time job and start Shiok Meets. Um, I had heard about cell-based meats around 2014, 2015, and I was very obsessed with the whole idea of growing meat and seafood using stem cells. I have been a vegetarian by choice all my life. Uh, due to ethical reasons. So this was pretty good for me. And I was able to, you know, um, work uh, for the environment, for the human beings, for the animals, and uh, use a cutting edge technology and be one of the first in the world to work on cell-based crustaceans. So right now I am an entrepreneur, innovator. I also do some angel investment as well. I've just uh, become an investor this year. So I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. And I kind of have I would say my life's mission right now is to make sure that Shiok Meats commercializes pretty soon. And then we're able to get more and more people to eat cell-based seafood in the future. So finally, coming to our, the technology of Shiok Meats, here is a very simple infographic that we have put together where we have compared cell-based seafood to greenhouse um, where plants, fruits, vegetables are grown. So as you can see here in a greenhouse, you generally take a small cutting of a plant and you put it in a nutrient rich controlled environment where you control the temperature, the sunlight, the heat, the humidity, the soil, the water, all of it. And this is not um, affected by climate change or any of the issues like rain or sun or whatever it is, it doesn't affect it. And at the end of a couple of weeks and months, what you get is real fruits, real vegetables and real plants. Uh, it's not fake or synthetic. Similarly, in cell-based seafood, what we do is we take a small sample of shrimp stem cells or lobster or crab stem cells from live animals. We put it in a very nutrient-rich environment. Um, we control the temperature, the mixing, the pressure, the humidity, the pH, um, all of it. And in our case, in about four to six weeks, what you get is cell-based shrimp that is not fake or synthetic or artificial. It is exactly the same shrimp to the DNA level, but it is not made from a whole animal. You don't have to grow a full animal to do it. And you don't have to spend uh, too much time doing it because generally shrimps take a couple of months to grow. Uh, this is faster. We don't have to use antibiotics or chemicals and uh, none of the um, harmful stuff for human beings. And we keep it as clean as possible for us to do this. So here we have actually done an illustration to explain this a bit further. So the previous one was a simpler explanation of the technology. Here we've expanded it. And this is our patent pending technology. The whole uh, tech was uh, um, you know, uh, discovered by Kai and me within Shirk Meats. And we have decided to patent the technology. So as you can see here, we take out muscle stem cells from a live shrimp or a prawn. And then we use these in a smaller Petri dish or in the lab, for example. And then we grow it into larger quantities. So I'm talking about 10 to 20 ml, put it in 200 to 300 ml. And then we put them in bioreactors, which are large stainless steel vessels. So our manufacturing plant essentially will look like a brewery, you know, these large stainless steel tanks. But instead of beer inside, it's going to be seafood and meats. So that's exactly what it is. So what we do is we control the environment. We provide a nutrient broth, uh, which has a lot of growth factors like proteins, fatty acids, lipids, vitamins, and so on. And then what we do is we convert the stem cells into muscle tissue, which is essentially your meat. So final product is actually minced shrimp meat that has the same taste, same flavor, same color, all of it. It doesn't have a shape yet, we are working on a 3D shape and a texture that will come out in the next couple of years. But right now, minced shrimp can be used in soups, noodles, um, for making sushi to an extent, uh, tempura. Uh, we can also use it in dumplings and so on. Um, so that's what we have been prototyping with as well. Uh, the meat is actual meat, like I mentioned, to the DNA, to the cellular level, it's actual meat. Um, we don't grow the entire animal, so no shell, no no head, no eyes, no uh, legs. It's just the meat inside that we eat, which also means that we are 
zero wastage because whatever we produce can be eaten by us. So this was our first prototype, which was the Shiok shrimp prototype that we produced in March, 2019. So about eight months of starting the company. Um, our shiok shrimp was mixed with plant-based pork and used in dumplings. And we got some amazing reviews from some of the people who tasted it. Ever since we've been doing a lot more prototyping, but I'm happy to say that very recently, just, just as of uh, two weeks back, uh, we actually launched our first lobster prototype using stem cells. And uh, we actually made three dishes with it, um, or rather one of the dish was with uh, shiok shrimp, which was the uh, first one on the left you see, which is a shiok shrimp uh, broth um, that is used in the flavoring in a spear. Then our uh, cell-based lobster was showcased in a gazpacho um, and also in a terrine uh, mixed with some plant-based meat. And we had some amazing reviews as well. Uh, we had an exclusive tasting session for the press, some of our investors, uh, some restauranters as well, and uh, food um, company CEOs and directors as well. And um, as you can see, the comments were great. Uh, they could definitely differentiate between the shrimp and the lobster flavor. There was a lot of umami. The flavor was very explosive and they could definitely enjoy the dishes. So we're very happy with how that turned out. Um, one of the key reasons for us not being in the market yet is because our, pro pro our process needs to be scaled up. So we are working on that. We are actually building our first manufacturing plant in Singapore uh, to produce the first batch of uh, shrimp, uh, shiok shrimp, as well as get the regulatory approval and so on. But also our process is pretty expensive right now. Uh, so if you remember um, as part of the process, you've seen that the stem cells have to grow in this nutrient broth with a lot of growth factors like proteins, lipids, fatty acids, carbohydrates, and so on. So right now that liquid, um, which we call as media, is only produced by pharma companies, pharmaceutical companies, because stem cell research is for healthcare and biomedical applications. Um, so that is actually 80% of our cost. And that's why it's costing us about $5,000 a kilogram to produce shrimp or lobster meat. But we want to bring it down to $50 a kilogram. And how we are doing this is we have actually partnered up with the world, one of the world's number one pharmaceutical company to make cheaper media or this nutrient broth for us. Uh, it's an exclusive par partnership with them. We also partnered up with Integriculture, which is a Japanese company that uses a proprietary system to reduce the price. And of course, third, we are doing our, our in-house research to swap out some of the chemical ingredients with plant-based edible food grade ingredients. So it's cheaper, it's edible, it's safe for human consumption as well as the regulatory process will be um, more easier that way. So we are a capital intensive company. We are a biotech company that's trying to work on food technology. So we do need a lot of capital. So up until now, we have raised about 20 million, a uh, little more than 20 million US dollars. Uh, so we raised our seed funding um, last year, which was about $7.6 million uh, from very notable investors, as you can see on the right. We have some food companies, impact investors, accelerators, um, and so on support us. Recently, in September this year, we actually closed our Series A round, which was 12.6 million US dollars. And this money will actually help us set up our first manufacturing plant in Singapore and get the commercialization, as I mentioned. So with regards to timeline, we're looking to launch our product in Singapore in 2022, so less than two years from now. So right now we are working on R&D, of course. We are looking at mid-scale setup of our manufacturing plant production, get the regulatory approval, and then launch in premium restaurants in 2022. These are two main types of products that we're looking at. One is the frozen meat product, which will be sold B2B, B2B to C. We are already working with some restaurants and food companies who are prototyping and happy to you know, collaborate with us. Uh, we're, we also have a byproduct, which is a self, shelf stable powder. And this can be used as flavoring in noodles and soups, which we wanna do B2B. Just looking at the global or APAC strategy for us is we're starting off with Singapore because Singapore is known um, as like the gold standard for food safety and security. It actually wants to increase its food production in the next um, 10 years to 30%. 
So the government is very supportive. It gives us grants, tax rebates, and helps us, um, you know, kind of commercialize the product eventually. Um, later, we want to expand to Thailand, Australia, India, Malaysia, and other Asian markets. Um, for the other markets outside of APAC, we're willing to license our technology once it's patented so that we can uh, make cell-based seafood as widely available as possible. Um, Singapore is also the first ever country in the world to have a regulatory framework for cell-based meats. Um, the other countries, even the US doesn't have it yet. So we're pretty excited to work with the authorities here. Um, so with that, I'd like to end my talk per se. I do have a couple of questions that I was given to answer. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, with that, uh, thank you very much for listening. And I just want to say, please contact me if you have any questions or if you want to work with us. Um, we are looking at companies that can provide us with food and feed grade ingredients, uh, hydrolysates. Uh, we work, we're looking at working with companies that can help us with the media production and media research as well. And also to work with some of the aquaculture farms that are out there so that we can work on endangered species. We can use their stem cells to create their meats as well. So let me uh, go ahead and answer the questions now. So some of the questions I have is, um, how far are you uh, from having an uh, industrial production at affordable prices for niche markets of shrimp from stem cells? So like I'd mentioned, we are looking to launch our first shiok shrimp product in Singapore in 2022, and then expand beyond that to other countries, other species like lobster and crab as well. So I would say we are looking at commercializing in industrial scale, uh, to premium uh, niche markets in the next um, two to three years and then expand beyond that in the next five to seven years. Um, the next question is what steps are you taking uh, so that it is not considered a test tube or laboratory food and will you be considered actually an alternative protein source? Yes, we are an alternative protein source. We come under the novel foods category. Um, we are definitely a protein source. Uh, we're doing nutritional analysis right now to prove that as well. But what we are growing is actual protein, actual animal protein, but from stem cells and not from uh, a dead animal, for example. Uh, we only do research in the laboratory or in test tubes, as you've mentioned. We do not produce the meat in the test tubes or in the laboratory. Um, just to give you an example, all of the processed foods that you're eating from your chocolate drink to your coffee, um, all these processed foods, even your packaged cheese right now was once made in the lab, you know, was once tested, reformulated, formulated in a lab, but eventually all the food products are made in a food safe manufacturing facility. So our R&D is done in the lab but our production is actually done in a food safe manufacturing facility. And we're doing a lot of consumer education and awareness to make them aware of this and not freak out by the fact that it's lab grown or lab made. It's not, it is actual um, protein and food that's made in a food safe manufacturing facility. Next question is, do you think it could be placed as a massive product or will it be a niche product? At least for the next 10 years, we see it as being very niche premium, you know, coming under the similar to like organic fruits and vegetables and meats that are out there. But we definitely see it becoming a mainstream uh, massive market um, in the next, I would say, nine to 15 years, which is not very far away. Uh, can it be considered as a vegan product is my last question. Um, honestly, I wouldn't call it vegan. And I, my answer to that question is no. Uh, like I mentioned, to the DNA level, it is still animal protein. It is very much real shrimp meat, except that it doesn't come from a full grown, fully grown animal that was killed. It's made out of stem cells, so I wouldn't call it vegan because, ve because vegan's definition is none of, none of the product's ingredients have, are ever from an animal. The stem cells are still from an animal. Stem cells have this amazing capability of growing outside of the animal's body, and that's the technology that we use. So once we take out stem cells from the live animal, we don't have to go back to the animal again. So we make our own stem cell banks, and these banks are like a starter culture. So how you make yogurt or sourdough, you take a medium, let's say yogurt, you take a medium of milk, 
you add some of the starter culture of the yogurt and then it forms yogurt and then to make your next batch you have another um, you know gel uh, jar of or a, a, or a you know like a pot of milk and then you add a little bit from the previous yogurt batch which is your starter culture so very similar to that is what we do we have a medium we use some stem cells once this all grows we have another uh, bioreactor or these huge stainless steel vats with more medium we take some from the previous batch and it goes on and on so that we don't have to go back to the animal again um, I think that is the end of my presentation and it I've answered the questions as well. I hope this was useful and uh, please, as I mentioned, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you and have a great day or evening. Bye.